morning friends welcome to galaxy online learning i am sunil desai and today we are going to study the two most interesting poems of robert frost okay you have already studied one of his poem the famous poem the road not taken okay and today we are going to study two of his poem one by one after the other okay robert frost Before going to the poem, I like to tell you that Robert Frost was an American poet, but his work was first published in Britain before it was published in America. He had no formal degree, but if you see his poem, they all have philosophical themes. They are set in the village background, okay, and they have philosophical themes. So first, I'll read for you the poem. Okay, and then we will. Then I am going to explain you each stanza of it. Okay, so first I read the poem for you. The name of the poem is "Dust of Snow." The way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part. Of a day, I had to very simple short poem, okay, hardly of a line, okay. But this poem has a very very deep meaning, okay. It's a very simple poem, but it has a very very deep meaning to it, okay. See, uh, what does it ex uh, expresses? See now, what the situation? I just talk uh, tell you about the situation. This poet is standing or maybe sitting under the hemlock tree. Okay, hemlock is a poisonous tree. Okay, he is he is not talking about some beautiful trees. He is he is telling about the home. See the significance of this uh, symbolism and significance of this things. Then the bird in the poem poet uh, poem is also poem is also what is a crow. It's not a nightingale, no beautiful birds, not a peacock. It's just a crow, which most of the people don't like. See, hemlock tree again, people are not going to dislike. Pine, yeah, people will like pine tree, but hemlock tree, then crow, the bird, people don't like them because maybe of the color, the way he, um, the way the crow he uh, eats or um, he is what or you know. Mm. The way uh, he doesn't look good, he doesn't his cow cow and all the things. So the way he his voice, everything. So people don't like. So he has particularly symbolized these two things: crow and hemlock tree. Means what? That things which you don't like in life. That's a symbolism. Okay. So what he uh, this uh, one day one fine day the poet is. Standing or sitting under the hemlock tree, maybe he is in his own worries, in his own tension, thinking about something what has happened which is not like in his life, and he must be thinking about it how to go through that situation maybe, okay. And suddenly what happens? The crow, which is sitting on the top of the hemlock tree, he shook off. So when he shook. What happened? The it's the winter season, so ice is uh, snow has been snow is there on the tree. So when he shoots, what happened? The 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 tree share when the um, crow sorry when the crow shakes up. What happened? The dust of the snow it falls down on the body, on the head, on the um, face of this. And the cold touch, okay, of that snow refreshes the poet. And what he feels, he must be worried about something which is he has not liked in his life or the situation which was him. Suddenly, after when that uh, dust of snow fell on him, because of the touch of that cold uh, snow, what happens? He gets refreshed. And he starts thinking, oh, it will fresh. Then he starts, he starts thinking that 
unnecessarily I am spending my day worrying about what has happened. He said, now I can spend the rest of my day in a better way, thinking about what I can do in the future. So a very simple thing he wants to tell you, in a very simple way he has told you the significance. That means he wants to tell you that in the life, in your life, there are things going to happen which you won't like. Okay, which you won't like. But still, you should not worry about those things. Okay, you should face those things and you should go ahead, move ahead. Okay, there is a bright future ahead. So, first we will see what's, what is in the first stanza. It's just a two stanza poem. Okay, in the first stanza, the poet says, The way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree. So, what if the poet Robert Frost wants to say that how the dust of snow has the small incident, it's a very small incident, it has changed his mood. Okay. So, in this simple sentence, he has given a great, the, the simple sentence has a very great significance. Okay. That poet in a very depressed mood, hopelessly is standing or sitting under the hemlock tree. He was in sorrow, in his own thoughts, thinking about what has happened or what the situation he is in. And suddenly what happens? A crow that was sitting on the, um, a crow that was sitting on the tree shook the tree and the fine particles of snow fell on his face maybe, on his head, on his palms maybe and he got refreshed. Okay? The suddenly change the mood of the poet. Now what does he say in the second stanza? Has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of the day I had ruled. So when the soft and cold snow fell on the poet, it changed his mood from sad to happy. He started feeling better. He felt soothed. Okay? He got refreshed and the simple incident helped him to enjoy. The simple incident helped him to enjoy the remaining part of his day. Okay? So, this, he became happy and he saved the rest of the day unnecessarily ruining. Ruled me, uh, he was what you said, rude, rude means what? Regretting. Okay? Unless, unnecessarily regretting of what had happened, he now uh, spent the rest of the day in a pleasant way. So, the poet wants to tell you in this simple poem that don't get depressed by the difficulties you face in your life. Okay? Don't because then something better can happen ahead. Why spend the rest of your life thinking about what had happened in the past, ruining your, regretting for what had happened, ruining your day, ruining your time. Instead, think about the future and move ahead. So, a very simple poem but having a lot of meaning. Okay? So, the poetic devices which he has used in this poem what do you feel? It is the rhyming scheme. The rhyming scheme, if you find it, is AB, AB. That's the rhyming scheme, right? And there's a lot of symbolism. He has used symbolism in this poet. He has used hemlock tree, crow, means things which you dislike in life. Okay? He has not used um, uh, good birds or beautiful birds or a pleasant tree. So he wants to, it signifies the things in life which you don't like, which you dislike. Okay? So, that's all about the, the simple poem, The Dust of Snow. Now, next, we'll come to the next poem of the same poet, Robert Frost, Fire and Ice. Okay? See, you know, each and everything is an end. After the day comes night. Okay, the day ends, night starts. 
night ends in this stars. Your tenth center now in the sense that it's going to end one day. Maybe you don't know when, but it's going to end. Okay. After that, you will start with your new life, college life. That's going to end one day. You will go to your, for your professional life. So things keep on changing and anything it ends one day. A new thing begins. The old thing ends, a new thing begins. Similarly, for years together, people are thinking that one day this earth is, this life is going to end. The whole universe, this earth is some way, somehow going to end. But how it is going to end? That's a big question. Whether it's going to end because of the fire or because of the ice. Now again, he has symbolized Robert Frost's symbolism. What is fire? For the poet, okay, fire means greediness. Okay, see, if you see today, okay, fire means greediness, I'll come to the total experience, we'll read the poem and then we'll come to the explanation. Fire means greediness and ice means hatred. That's all I'll tell you now, right now, and I'll come back to it once we read the poem. Okay? Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. Okay, see, what the poet says is that in this poem, that some say the world will end in fire, means people are saying, some people are saying, from years, from long, long years back, people are saying that one day the earth is going to end, there will be a lot of heat generated, okay, and everything will end. Whereas some people say, no, it's, there will be he generated maybe some volcanoes coming up, earthquakes happening and everything gets devastated. Okay, there. Whereas some fears, no. What will happen is that because of the global warming maybe, the ice at the poles will melt and when this ice will melt, there will be icy cold water everywhere over the world and people will get drowned, the whole universe, the whole earth will get drowned into the flora and fauna will get drowned and it will come to an end. Okay, so there are two things. People, some people think that it's fire that's it's going to end the world. Some say it's ice that's going to end the world. Okay, but what the first uh, is that from what I have taste of desire. Desire means a very strong feeling, intense feeling of having something. Okay, desire. You desire that you should get ninety plus marks in your board exam. That's a desire means you have a very strong feeling. Only if you have that desire, then only you will work hard, you will study and you will get those marks. Okay. So, desire means a strong, intense feeling of wants. Okay. So, I hold with those. So, uh, first is that what I am seeing and what I feel of that, this people today, so he has compared this with humanity, human beings. Human beings today, whatever they get, they still want more and more. They are not happy with what they have. If you have a car, if you have a Maruti, you would like to have a Merc or a BMW. Okay, if you have a flat, you would like to have a bungalow. So, you always, your wants are always increasing, ever increasing. There's a competitiveness between you. Honestly, instead of enjoying what you're having, you are behind getting more and more and more. Okay, so this strong feeling of getting more and more will take your, will lead you to and your life will end in this only because you're working tirelessly to get more and more and you're not happy with what you have. You want more. I want more money. I want more money. Okay. So, this is going to take the toll and one day everything is going to end. That's what the poet wants to say. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. But in this next stanza, first stanza he says that the desire want 
the intense need of wanting more and more will end this world. But in the second stanza, what it says is it is a different thing. But if the world was to end a second time, okay, if the world was to end a second time, I think it was enough. See today what you see, there is a lot of hatred among people, hatred among communities, hatred among uh, states, hatred among nations, hatred among people, on the on religion, on caste, on creed. Okay, so this hatred is ever increasing. Okay, no one is happy. No one wants to stay together. And people are trying to spread more and more hatred. And what will happen? Because of the hatred, again, that will lead to destruction. Okay, and this destruction will one day end the world. So, what the poet wants to tell you, Again, see, this is all philosophical. Robert for always writes something philosophical. What uh, the poet wants to tell you in this poem is that, see, every human being has an emotion. Okay? Every, you, we all have emotions, but we have to control our emotions. Okay? If we don't control, if we allow them to the run amok means you don't control this emotion that will lead to destruction okay so you can just check it for yourself see sometimes you feel very angry and if you when you feel very angry and if you don't control your anger what happens you throw away something that leads to destruction you throw away your mobile phone what will happen what will happen? Mobile, the phone will break down. Okay, so you will, it will be a loss, no? it will be destruction. Okay, you are throwing something away. You are throwing your books. The books get torn. That's a destruction. But instead, if you control your emotion, if you control your anger, what will happen? Destruction won't be there. So, the poet in this simple poem again, this very short poem again, okay, what he wants to tell is that we should be Every human being should be able to control his emotions. If you control your emotions, there will be peace everywhere. Okay? There will be peace and you will enjoy your life. Okay? But if you don't control your emotions, what will happen? If you want more and more, you are not happy what do you have, you, don't, you are not happy with the clothes, you want a better dress tomorrow. Okay, you are not happy with the food your mom gives you. You want to go to the hotel, then you don't like that, then you want to go to a faster hotel. So, this greed, this every ever increasing greed, you are not happy with what you have. So, you are spending all your time in focusing on this greed. Okay, similarly, hatred. So, both the things, more and more things, uh, the desire for having more and more, because, and, Second is hatred towards each other will lead to the end of this world. Okay, that's what the poet, poet wants to tell you in this simple poem. Okay, now let us see. Oh, yes, right, it's all in the poem. See the rhyming scheme of this poem. How do you find the rhyming scheme? Is a B A A B C B C B A A A A B C B C B Okay. See here again he has symbolized fire and a fire towards what? Greed and ice means ice stands for uh, hatred. Okay. See, there's a question. See, for first, what do fire and ice stand for? Here are some ideas. Greed, others, cruelty, lust, others means greed again, intense greed. Okay? Cruelty, lust, conflict, fury, intolerance, rigidity, in insensitivity, coldness, indifference, hatred. Okay? So now, fire, fire stands for I'll tell you, fire stands for greed, avarice, lust, conflict and fury. 
whereas I stands for cruelty, intolerance, rigidity, insensitivity, coldness, indifference and hatred. Okay? So, that's all about these two poems. Okay? So, with this, I end this today's uh, lecture and we'll be back for the next lecture. So, until then, bye. Okay? Thank you.